resting but for but a night. We can imagine all too well a time where the powerful fear, where the powerful fear a message of compassion, of peace, of simplicity. When it is wrapped in dirty swaddling clothes, sleeping in a food trough among the animals and the mess of poverty. A child born of a yet unwed mother, a father whose ties are solely love, and a lifestyle that can only be called migrant. From the midst of vulnerability, we learn a new way, a love that moves in our hearts, moves our hearts, a vision of peace in an age of violence, and hope where one would never expect to find it, begins in the quiet solitude of family, with the meek of the earth, with a people that must find another path, knowing the principalities and the powers can never, never satisfy the least among us. May the Christmas story birth in all of us a sense of possibility, a renewal of faith in the breadth of the human spirit, despite all of the failings of our world, that with every child that's born, this wonder is made known. We are given a gift that is our own. Come and let us worship together. We light this chalice here in the darkness of winter as we wait. This temporary space is one filled with prayers to be answered, love to be given and received, miracles to be witnessed. May this light guide us until the light of the sun returns again. All right, welcome everyone and Merry Christmas. It's good to see everyone. Uh, yes, welcome to this Christmas Eve service of Emerson Unitarian Universalist Church. My name is Julie Borden, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm very happy to be your worship associate tonight. We want to welcome everyone who's joining us, both in person and online. Briefly, a couple of notes. Please make sure that you've silenced your electronic devices, and thank you for wearing your mask for everyone's health and safety. Also, everyone in the sanctuary is invited to stay afterward for coffee, cocoa, and cider, and cookies um, behind those doors to your left. So, Christmas as a Unitarian Universalist is kind of interesting. Different from growing up in Christian churches, but not as different as I might have expected, since one of the sources of our faith is wisdom from the world's religions, as we're reminded by our beautiful stained glass mobile. That means we can celebrate holidays for their symbolic, if not their literal, meaning. In the words of Tony Lorenzen, as you use, we have many different views of Jesus, preacher, prophet, healer, holy man. As we gather tonight to celebrate his birth, we recognize that each night a child is born is a holy night. And we stop on this night of profound love to pray for peace on earth, goodwill toward all people. We will tell the story of Jesus' birth from the gospel. Now, as a great storyteller once said, I don't know if the story happened exactly this way, but I know that it's true. I know every child is a holy child, including you. 
I know angels sing each time a child is born. They sang when you were born. I know that the stars are full of wonder, and so are we here this evening. And it is good to be together. Please rise in body or in spirit and join in singing our first carol of the night, O Come All Ye Faithful. It's number 253 in the gray hymnal, and of course, words will also be on the screen. And we'll just be singing, O Come Let Us Adore Him. From the Gospel according to Luke. Now it happened in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered for taxation. This was the first registration and occurred while Quirinus was governor of Syria. So all went to be registered, each to their own towns. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, for he was from the house and heritage of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was betrothed, and who was pregnant. So it was that while they were there, the time came for her to birth her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and swaddled him, and laid him in a manger, because there was no space for, him, for them at the inn. Shepherds were in that region, there staying in the fields, keeping watch over the flock by night. Then an angel of the Most High God came upon them, and the glory of the living God shone around them, and they were greatly terrified. But the angel said to them, Fear not. 
Look, for I proclaim to you the good news of great joy for all of the people. For there is born to you this day a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Sovereign God in the city of David. This will be a sign for you, that you will find a baby swaddled and lying in a manger. This reading is by Marcus Liefert, and it's called Fear Not and Hallelujah, and I love it. I could use an angel popping by every now and then to tell me to fear not. Instead of waking up and doom scrolling, I want each morning for my phone to alert me to a baby born. It would be sort of like an obituary in reverse. Today in San Rafael was born Ella May Riley. She may, my phone would declare, with little shooting star emojis bursting across the screen, help find a cure for cancer, engineer food systems that end world hunger, or negotiate peace treaties. Fear not, it would gently remind me, another human life has begun another newborn Messiah has been welcomed into this world. Undoubtedly, the angel would alert me, she will touch other lives. She will care deeply, and others will feel excitement when they see her, sorrow at her absence. Perhaps she will teach children, drive buses, fight fires, store at libraries, or manage cities. Or maybe she will inspire people around the world for millennia to come by preaching a message of transcendent love and a holy vision of peace on earth. She may, it would conclude, live a quiet life with a few close friends, a cat or maybe chickens, who depend on her to feed them each day, and a case of treasured books she turns to when the rest of the world is too much to face. Fear not, it would gently remind me. Another human life has begun. Another newborn Messiah has been welcomed into this world. I'd still read the science and politics of climate change and feel my heart lurch for our planet in peril. I'd still read about police departments propping up white supremacy and high courts stripping women's rights or love, separated by borders, our country still ruthlessly declaring no room at the inn. But in the back of my head, I'd also hear the angel song, imagining that miraculous life full of spectacular greatness or simple, ordinary human wonder. Fear not, the angels would text me. Hallelujah, I'd write back. Hallelujah, as all of us move forward, doing the next thing that is to be done, which is about all you can ask. Fear not, the angels say. Hallelujah, we write back. Let heaven and nature sing. Please rise in body or in spirit and join in singing Joy to the World. It's number 245 in your hymnals, and we'll be singing verses 1 and 2. I 
noticed some of you discovered that the words on the screen were maybe not the ones that were uh, written, etched in your brain. It's the funny thing about worshiping in a Unitarian Universalist church, and some of the words have been changed, and some of them may feel, to those who are very Christian, may feel like, boy, these feel way too secular. And there are other times where the people are like, Bo other people are like, boy, this feels way too Christian. And that is Unitarian <laughs> Universalism. And that is beautiful. Our next reading this morning is adapted uh, from For So the Children Come, a uh, beloved reading that is read at many Unitarian Universalist churches, dare I say maybe even most of them on Christmas Eve by the Unitarian Universalist educator, Sophia lyon Foz. For so, I didn't, I guess we didn't get the note. Originally this was, there's a song, there's a song version that has music between them and I cut that because I didn't want the service to run too long, so I apologize. I guess you didn't see my, no. I convinced him to cut you? it, it was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> but a beautiful song. For so the children come, and so they have been coming. Always in the same way they come, born of the bodies and dreams of their parents. No angels herald their beginnings. No prophets predict their future courses. No wise men see a star to show where to find the babe that will save humankind. Yet each night a child is born is a holy night. Parents sitting beside their children's cribs feel glory in the sight of a new life beginning. They ask, what child is this who has come to us? What life will be theirs? What life will be ours? Where will this child travel? What love will this child bring? What blessings are we holding in our arms? Each, Each night, night a, child a child is born is, born is, a, is a holy night. night. A time for singing, a time for wondering, a time for worshiping. The ancient story begins with a divine messenger bringing news that is most unexpected. This message starts with the reassurance that you are worthy, surprises you with its boldness, and then calms your fears. When you listen deeply, what is love's message for you tonight? For our next carol, we'll sing O Holy Night. Now, O Holy Night began as a poem written in 1843 in France by a socialist and a free thinker who we might today call an atheist, although he didn't become an atheist or a free thinker until after he wrote this song. More than a decade later, in the lead up to the Civil War in the United States, a, United, a Unitarian minister translated it into English. The Reverend John Sullivan Dwight was also an ardent abolitionist and saw in O Holy Night not just a sweet song about the baby Jesus, but a radical call to hope for weary souls and to justice in a world of oppression. Now many churches refused to sing the abolitionist verse, and still today many of the most popular versions leave out that verse or change the lyrics to hide its abolitionist roots. We'll sing it this, this evening with that verse intact. Oh, hear the angel voices. What message is love sending you on this holy night? Now, I'm going to invite Phil Koretsky up to help me sing this. Some of you may remember or you uh, will notice soon that it can be a little bit of a challenging song at a couple points. So. Um, if you just want to listen, that's fine, but you're more than welcome to, you're all, of course, more than welcome to join in. I invite you to please rise in body or in spirit. Oh, holy night, the stars are bright. 
singing that song last weekend at a caroling party and when we got to the fall on your knees part I just got shivers down my spine and so I was like we should sing that this evening beautiful this is the season of giving a season of expectation and hope in the ancient story of the birth in Jerusalem, there was no room in the inn, and the couple, expecting their first child, found shelter in a stable. Today, people still journey, seeking shelter, seeking freedom. People struggle to meet life's demands and live with dignity. Each year on Christmas Eve, we take up a collection to support the minister's discretionary fund which is a special fund which the minister uses to confidentially provide support for people who have an immediate financial need, often in the case of some unexpected emergency like a job loss or a medical crisis. It might be money for a meal or groceries, help paying rent or bills to make sure the heating doesn't get turned off. This year, we are also sharing the plate with the Palestinian Children's Relief Fund, whose Gaza Relief and Recovery Campaign aims to address the very urgent hum humanitarian needs and to support long-term recovery efforts in Gaza. 
The funds raised this evening will primarily focus on immediate relief, including providing essential medical supplies, food, medical treatment, clean water, and other necessities for families affected by the conflict. The campaign will also support rebuilding healthcare facilities and offer trauma counseling, mental health support, and other initiatives for children affected by the conflict. To give and receive freely, without expectation, without shame, is a blessing we can give one another. We're not asking for offerings of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, although we'll take gold. (laughs) Just help for those in their time of need. And who knows, you may be providing support to someone who ends up being a savior for someone else. And so I invite you to be as generous as you are able and to take great joy in the collective good that this money will do. This act of giving and receiving is how we can bring more light and more love into a world of great need. You can donate online via the Breeze mobile app or at donate.emersonuuc.org and select Sunday Offering. If you are writing a check, please make it out to Emerson UUC or just EUUC and write share the plate in the memo. Will the ushers now please come forward as we receive this offering of love. Our next reading is Angels Sang of Peace, written by the Reverend Dan Schatz for this Christmas. Angels Sang of Peace. We heard them out above the fields, first whispers, then a rising throng, singing, shouting, thrilling a promise, a prayer, a plea, peace. On earth, peace. So we followed a star to an infant child, all wrapped in stable rags, shared the news the angels had brought us, and went upon our way. But in my heart, though years have gone, Choirs never stilled. Angels sang of peace, a promise, a prayer, a plea on earth, peace.
The words for it came upon the midnight clear were written by the Unitarian minister Edmund Hamilton Sears in 1849, the year after the Mexican-American War. Unlike most Christmas carols, it's not about the Christmas story. Instead, he chose to focus on the social messages of Christmas, as well as how hard it was to hear that message of love, of goodwill, and of peace amidst all of the strife in the world. During this time of war and strife, may we heed the call of the angels. I invite you to please rise in body or in spirit and join in singing, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. It's number 244 in the gray hymnal. story this evening is called Amazing Peace, and it's a poem, it's originally a poem by Maya Angelou, here illustrated beautifully. Thunder rumbles in the mountain passes, and lightning rattles the eaves of our houses, Floodwaters await us in our avenues. Snow falls upon snow, falls upon snow to avalanche over unprotected villages. The sky slips low and gray and threatening. 
We question ourselves, what have we done to so affront nature? We worry, God, are you there? Are you there, really? Does the covenant you made with us still hold? Into this climate of fear and apprehension, Christmas enters, streaming lights of joy, ringing bells of hope, and singing carols of forgiveness high up in the bright air. The world is encouraged to come away from rancor, come the way of friendship. It is the glad season. Thunder ebbs into silence, and lightning sleeps quietly in the corner. Floodwaters recede into memory. Snow becomes a yielding cushion to aid us as we make our way to higher ground. Hope is born again in the faces of children. It rides on the shoulders of our aged as they walk into their sunsets. Hope spreads around the earth, brightening all things, even hate, which crouches beneath, which crouches breeding in dark corridors. In our joy, we think we hear a whisper. At first, it is too soft then only half heard. We listen carefully as it gathers strength. We hear a sweetness. The word is peace. It is loud now. It is louder, louder than the explosion of bombs. We tremble at the sound. We are thrilled by its presence. It is what we have hungered for. Not just the absence of war, but true peace. A harmony of spirit, a comfort of courtesies, security for our beloveds and their beloveds. We clap hands and welcome the peace of Christmas. We beckon this good season to wait a while with us. We Baptist and Buddhist, Methodist and Muslim say, come. Peace. Come and fill our world with your majesty. We, the Jew and the Jainist, the Catholic and the Confucian, implore you to stay a while with us so we may learn by your shimmering light how to look beyond complexion and see community. It is Christmas time. A halting of hate time. On this platform of peace, we can create a language to translate ourselves to ourselves and to each other. At this holy instant, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ into the great religions of the world. We jubilate the precious advent of trust. We shout with glorious tongues at the coming of hope. All the earth's tribes loosen their voices to celebrate the promise of peace. We angels and mortals, believers and non-believers, look heavenward and speak the word aloud. Peace. We look at the world and speak the word aloud. Peace. We look at each other and then into ourselves. And then we say without shyness or apology or hesitation, Peace, my brother. Peace, my sister. Peace, my soul.
In this holiday season, when everything is merry and joyful, it can sometimes be hard to find the joy, to find that sense of peace. In a year such as this one, in a time such as this, knowing this, I invite you to join me in this litany adapted from the Reverend Tess Baumberger. After each line, I invite you to please respond with the words, may we find peace. Say that with me. May we find peace. Spirit of life, goodness, and peace, may we find peace. When our world is worn by war, may we find peace. When our lives are ruled by fear, may we find peace. When loss troubles our thoughts, may we find peace. When loneliness weighs heavy in our hearts, may we find peace. When despair takes hold of our souls, may we find peace. As we offer help to those in need, may we find peace. As we go about our daily duties, may we find peace. As we make holiday preparations, may we find peace. As we gather in this place of grace, may we find peace. Spirit of life, goodness, and peace, may we find peace. I invite you now to rise in body or in spirit and join in singing our hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It's number 225 in the gray hymnal.
I invite you to enter a state of meditation or prayer. You can close your eyes or soften your gaze. Maybe take a deep breath, ground yourself with your feet on the floor. This prayer, When the World Was Dark, comes from the Iona community, an international Christian community who, inspired by faith and loving concern for the world and its people, work for a just and peaceful world in which all of life can flourish. When the world was dark and the city was quiet, you came. You crept in beside us and no one knew. Only the few who dared to believe that God might do something different. Will you do the same this Christmas, Lord? Will you come into the darkness of tonight's world not the friendly darkness, as when sleep rescues us from tiredness, but the fearful darkness, in which people have stopped believing that war will end, or that food will come, or that a government will change. Will you come into that darkness and do something different to save your people from death and despair? Will you come into the quietness of this city, not the friendly quietness as when lovers hold hands, but the fearful silence when the phone has not rung, the letter has not come, the friendly voice no longer speaks, the doctor's face says it all. Will you come into that darkness and do something different, not to distract, but to embrace your people? And will you come into the dark corners and the quiet places of our lives? We ask this not because we are guilt-ridden or want to be, but because the fullness of our lives long for, the fullness our lives long for, depends on us being as open and vulnerable to you as you were to us. When you came, wearing no more than diapers and trusting human hands to hold their maker. Will you come into our lives if we open them to you and do something different? When the world was dark and the city was quiet, you came. You crept in beside us. Do the same this Christmas, Lord. Please do the same this Christmas. And since we're going to be lighting candles soon, if anyone doesn't have a candle, um, they're in the entryway. So if I think the first few people who came in might not have gotten candles. So. Yeah, if we could bring the lights down in the room. In this season, when the light is longest and the world is dark, we turn to the light. Our tradition at the close of our Christmas Eve service is to light candles and we do this by passing the flame from one to another. A reminder of the importance of community to help us. And as the sanctuary fills with the light of our candles, it is a reminder too of the beauty in this community, in this world. So, as we sing Silent Night, we will pass the candle flame one to another. For those of you joining us online, you will be invited to join, light a candle as well, and if you'd like, you can dim the lights too. For those of you in the sanctuary, we'll all stay seated in our chairs. 
Then while we sing, we will pass our candlelight very carefully from one to another. As the light comes to you, and this is very important, let Julie, can I dem can you help me demonstrate? Uh, tilt your unlighted candle into the flame and keep the lighted candle upright because we don't want any hot wax on anyone. So again, keep your lit candle upright and steady so that the next person can light their candle from yours. And now, as Julie and I go down the aisles and start spreading that light, we will light our candles for our closing hymn, Silent Night. So let us, we'll sing together the three verses, and then we'll hum, and then sing the first verse one more time. So tender and love. 
close with the words of Howard Thurman. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring, pre to bring, uh, to bring peace among brothers and sisters and siblings of all genders, to make music in the heart. May it be so. And now I invite you to join in singing. We don't usually sing our postlude, but tonight we sing our postlude. And if we could bring those lights back up, that would be great. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Bless us, everyone. Please join us. It's been such a pleasure having you here this evening. Please join us for cookies and cocoa and cider in the, in the pavilion.